Hi everybody, today we are going to talk about code smells. Code smells aren't functional problems with your code, they're not bugs, but code smells are things about your code that just seem not quite right. They're things that make your code harder to read, harder to understand, and harder to maintain down the road, and they're things that are going to frustrate people who have to take your code and do something with it in the future. I see a lot of code smells. Student code tends to not smell very good. And so I thought I'd make a series of videos about code smells and hopefully I can give you some pointers that can help you write code that's not going to smell quite as bad. To start off with, the first code smell I wanna talk about are magic numbers. Magic numbers are just numbers. They are numerical constants in your code that you should probably replace with a symbolic representation. So here's an example of a magic number. The programmer is testing a variable, is testing whether the variable called force is greater than 712, but why 712? What, is the, what does the number mean? Why was it chosen? The first problem with a magic number is that the person reading the code often doesn't understand what purpose that number serves. The person reading the code doesn't know why you picked it or where it came from, and there's a lot of knowledge that the programmer probably had, or maybe didn't have. Maybe it was just arbitrary. Maybe it was something that just happened to work okay, and so they just stuck it in there. The problem is the person reading the code doesn't know which is the case. They can't tell the difference. And that's why it's magic. It does something, and things seem to work, but we don't understand why. So it's magic. It's a magic number. Uh, here's another example. The programmer used an array of numbers that is 512 bytes long. As a result, the number 512 shows up several places in the code. Now, in this case, it's not too hard to tell what the number is doing because we, well, we can see that it's the, the size of the array, but it's still not a good idea. Your reader shouldn't have to figure out what your code does. It should be pretty obvious. But second, because at some point you might want to change the size of this array. Either you realize you made it too small or you need to port this code to a different application where you're dealing with larger sized arrays. And when you do, you have to go through and find every place in your code that depends on this magic number. And chances are you'll probably miss one. Programs with magic numbers tend to be brittle and they tend to be hard to change. Instead, what if I use a variable or a pound to find? and we can set the array length and give it a symbolic representation, and then we're gonna use the symbolic name throughout our code. Now if I wanna change the, array, the length of the array, I only have to change a single line of code. I just have to change the value of that variable or the value of the pound of fine, and it's gonna change it everywhere. And the code is easier to understand. So the general rule is this. You generally wanna use symbolic names instead of numerical constants in most places in your code. Now there are a few cases where this rule doesn't make, just doesn't make sense. And let's look at them really quick. So in for loops, for example, initializing a counter to zero is probably just fine. The zero, it's obvious what purpose the zero serves in this example, and it's not likely that this code is ever gonna be changed to use a different initial value. So in this case, changing zero to a symbolic name probably doesn't make the code any easier to read. And so in this case, it's probably okay. Another example, when testing for even numbers, the use of two is probably okay because it's pretty obvious mathematically what this is doing and you're not likely to change it. When computing percentages, using 100 is probably okay. The point is not to be all pedantic about this. It's not to eliminate all constants from your code. The point is to look at your code and say, will this be easier to maintain and will this be easier to read if I replace this with a symbolic representation, if I replace this with a variable? Is this going to make my life easier down the road? And in most cases, the answer is yes. So anyway, that's code smell number one. I hope that's helpful. I hope you can take that into your, into your programming practice and, and make things better, easier to read, and more likely for your friends to like you when you give them your code. I hope that helps and have a great day. So what do you think? I hope that was useful. If you're enjoying these videos, if you find them useful, please consider subscribing to my channel. I post regularly. I try to post at least one a week. If there are more things you'd like to see that I haven't posted, more how-tos, more technical questions, please leave comments and questions. Please send me email, uh, however you want to get a hold of me. Just let me know what you'd like me to make, and as I have time, I'll, I'll see what I can do.